Good afternoon. I'm George Lavender, Worcester County Executive. It's two o'clock and it's time for our uh, daily update on the status of the coronavirus outbreak here in Westchester County. Uh, I'm uh, reporting to you today from the uh, Westchester County Department of Emergency Services Warehouse Building. We were here just a week ago uh, to highlight a donation that was made by Con Edison. And we're back this week to talk about a very generous donation that has come from the American Chinese United Care Alliance, of which we'll speak of a little bit more. We'll have a couple of speakers here. We have some of uh, our top medical professionals from some of our facilities around the uh, county. We're also joined by our Commissioner of Health, Dr. Charlita Amler, and our Commissioner of Emergency Services, John Cullen, and a lot of key members of their team. Let me begin with a couple of other bits of information before we talk about this tremendous donation and the generosity. <clears throat> In today's uh, numbers, we uh, have uh, a report from the state that there have been 26,633 cases, positive cases, of coronavirus in Westchester County. That is an increase of uh, uh, approximately 700 cases over yesterday. 26,633 is the number of total positives year to date on the coronavirus. However, two weeks ago, we reported 18,077 cases as being active. So on the belief that every two weeks, uh, those who have tested positive and have not become sick have cleared themselves of the virus concern we subtract that number from today's number and we have a number of active cases, people that have tested positive but have not yet cleared the two week mark. The number of active cases is 8,556. And uh, the continued good news over the last week is as a steady drop in the number of active cases. Uh, yesterday's number was 8,955, so it's dropped 400 cases from yesterday to today. If you go back uh, a week ago to the prior Friday um, uh, on the uh, 17th, we had uh, 10,000 cases that were active. So we've dropped down a bit, 1,500 cases in the last week, and that is a bit of good news. That is one of the indicators we use to show the flattening of the curve, which we've discussed uh, in many of these different reports. We do not have a hospitalization number for today yet. Uh, yesterday's number was 990, and that was the first time we'd gotten 100,000 people hospitalized, well below the 3,000 bed capacity of Westchester County. And we've been running a hospitalization rate about 11%, which we consider a positive compared to worst case scenario, 20% of the number of active cases uh, being hospitalized. So <clears throat> what it does say is that our infrastructure, health infrastructure can absorb the number of uh, ill people at this point, and they're getting care at all of our various hospitals around the county. The county center has been outfitted for an additional 110 rooms for overflow. At this point, it has not been made operative. It is standby equipment. And it may be necessary, if not for Westchester res residents, then potentially residents from New York City or elsewhere in the Hudson Valley. Uh, wherever there's an available bed, hopefully it will be available for us and we'll continue to go forward in that area. We have lost 891 Westchester residents at this point. We lost uh, 29 overnight from the prior number. Our uh, ratio, death uh, fatality ratio, remains at 3.3%. But we treat each individual passage as an important passage because Every person in that list is not a statistic. It was somebody's husband or somebody's wife, somebody's mother or father, brother or sister, somebody's colleague at work, somebody they knew from the church or synagogue, a next door neighbor, uh, a childhood friend. They, they were individual lives that have been lost to this contagion. And, and I, to, I try to put it in graphic form by saying that on March 1st, every one of these 891 people were alive and now they've deceased. And so this is a serious issue that we're dealing with. And the sacrifices that we talk about that, that happen in the society, the inability of certain businesses to operate, the inability for us to come and go easily as we please, the requirement for us to wear masks in most contexts. These are things that we're not accustomed to. They're unusual. They're things that restrict our personal freedom. But we don't do them for no reason at all. We do them because 891 people have died, and there's a potential of more people dying. And that's what we're trying to prevent by preventing the spread of this. Each of the different things that we seek uh, is to try to reduce that spread, but also deal with a society that has gone through something that none of us have experienced. It doesn't matter if you're 15 years old or 95 years old, none of us alive today have seen this kind of a contagion go across our land, and we're going to have to learn how to handle it as best as we can. Also in the statistics, we have tested in Westchester County over 80,000 people. That is per capita, the highest rate of any uh, jurisdiction in New York State. And in absolute numbers, it's more than all of the other counties individually in the state, absent New York City. We've actually tested 81,553 people, 
and we're still running roughly a two to one ratio of every three people tested for COVID, two are negative, one is positive. Now there are more and more testing centers that are opening up in smaller locations, in addition to the ones that started this, which would be the drive-through facility in Glen Island, Westchester Medical Center created a, a similar facility about a week to 10 days after the Glen Island facility went up. And now we have some smaller walk-in testing areas in Mount Vernon and Yonkers, and there's news about more testing uh, areas that come up. The element of testing is critical in us being able to identify who's positive and isolate those who are positive so they don't infect additional people. And it's in the, uh, the, the easy nature of contagion of this disease that we have the greatest public health problem, absent the fact that we do not have a vaccine to uh, prevent it up front, and we don't have an antiviral to treat people who have uh, come down with COVID. Um, and uh, we're at this stage of the game seeing uh, the flattening of the curve in a number of ways, but we can't be confident about it. What measures we have taken to social distance uh, may be helping, may be working, but we don't want to test that process by uh, reopening willy-nilly all the things in society that are involved. I'll mention a couple of other points before we, uh, we go to our guests. Uh, I don't know, we're waiting for a particular guest to be here. Uh, has she arrived? Yes, she has. Okay, very good. Then, then let us talk uh, primarily about the, the main reason why we're here today. The American Chinese United Care Alliance, ACUC, is comprised of nearly 150 Chinese organizations. They have raised more than $5 million, $5 million in recent weeks to buy uh, uh, personal protective equipment, PPEs, for medical staff. They recently made donations of PPE to the city of Yonkers and also to our neighbors in Orange County. And now today they are making a significant contribution to those of us here in Westchester County. I'd like to call upon Victoria Alberto, who's a board member of ACUC. Uh, we're very appreciative of uh, the organization's work. Victoria, if you can come and share some thoughts and then invite some other individuals as well. And in proper social distancing, I'll move away. Uh, County Executive Latimer, um, Senior Vice President Constella, and Senior Vice President French, and the Assistant Director Spear. Today, I'd like to thank you for your leadership. Westchester County has paid a heavy price during this crisis, and we all appreciate the hard work of your office, county personnel, and of course, our brave medical professionals and these first responders. The work you have helped to lead has undoubtedly saved lives. And while much work remains to be done, we are encouraged by the recent reports that this disease may be slowing. That is why the membership of ACUC is proud to stand with you today as we deliver these vital supplies, as you work to protect our first responders and to treat those who are suffering from the effects of coronaviruses. ACUC is a grassroots organization made up of citizens who believe that we make a difference to our fellow citizens and this social and this special country we all call home. This disease has devastated our entire world and forever changed how we interact and do business. This virus has caused tremendous suffering. It does not respect political borders, age, or health. While some population may be more vulnerable, we know that it impacts all demographics. It has taken from us friends, associates, and members of our families. It has robbed us of the time that we can spend with the people who are important to us and prevent those who have passed from continuing to share and contribute to all humanity. I would like to take a moment to recognize some of our members who contribute to this event. Fudan Alumni USA Inc., Scottsdale Inside News Group, Richard Yan, also known as rather FTW on YouTube and his campaign donors, Huaxia Chinese School of Greater New York, Spider Spark Learning Center of Westchester, 
Venus Textile USA Inc., Kansas City Chinese American Association, Edmond Chinese Association, the Chinese community of East Chester, Takaho, Brownwell, Old Mandarin Restaurant Group, Eternal Love Foundation, Hasting Tea and Coffee, New York Chinese Ch Coffee Cup, Hightown Foundation, Jessica Chen Real Estate Agency, Tomorrow's Elite International Education Center, the U University of International Business and Economic USA Alumni Association. Our members understand that only by working together, pooling our resources and knowledge, can we hope to cure this terrible disease. ACUC is committed to our Westchester partners today and in the future as you work to respond and recover from this pandemic. Again, thank you for your incredible commitment to the people of our community and the United States of America. Thank you. Great. Is there other, anyone else that uh, wishes to speak or we so, good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Victoria. And we appreciate this tremendous, uh, um, generous contribution to the cause of medical protection in our county. Uh, two individuals that represent institutions that will benefit from these donations are institutions that have been on the forefront of dealing with this. So I'd like to first ask uh, Anthony Costello, who's the Senior Vice President of Operations of Westchester Medical Center uh, to speak. And then he will be followed by Dawn French, who's the Senior Vice President of Marketing and Community Outreach for White Plains Hospital. First. Mr. Costello. Thank you very much, County Exec. I'd like to say on behalf of Westchester Medical Center, and particularly the Valhalla campus, our flagship here, that we are very grateful to staff for the donations that we're getting, particularly from the ACUC. The community support has been outstanding. Um, the more we get to support from the community, the more we can provide to the community. PPE, as you know, has been limited throughout this entire battle that we're facing. But in order to offer services out to the community, like the testing that the county exec uh, mentioned, here at Valhalla, in our tent, we do about 800 tests for the community a day. Within the network, we exceeded 20,000 tests. Um, so the PPE enables us to be able to provide the staff in a safe environment to be able to do that. Also, uh, the, the, out, the support some of you have mentioned are from uh, the restaurant business. We have been able to distribute over 40,000 meals to our staff member, members that has been donated from the community and the restaurants. It keeps them going, it keeps them fresh, and it can, they're very excited. So we can't say enough. We've also just embarked on yesterday antibody testing. So the antibody testing, which is different from the uh, active infe infection testing, which is in the tent, actually tells you if you were asymptomatic or you could have been symptomatic and you have antibodies or were exposed to the virus. So we've actually just started that at the Valhalla campus. Uh, next week, we'll be able to enroll, uh, go forward across the entire network, which is 10 hospitals now. And then we're, we're putting together plans now to be able to offer it out to the community. So again, without the support of the community, we wouldn't be able to provide uh, much more than the inpatient care that we're providing uh, now, but also everything else we could extend to the community. So thank you very much uh, for your support. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Dawn French, White Plains Hospital. Thank you, um, County Executive Latimer. And I uh, just want to congratulate um, and uh, echo a lot of what Anthony just said and thanking the community for all of the support throughout this um, pandemic. It's, it's kind of crazy that it's been about eight weeks since we're going on eight weeks since this all began. And really, as Anthony said, the community has been so supportive 
to our healthcare heroes in so many different ways. And whether it's meals or donations of PP or monetary donations or cards and notes and letters from so many across Westchester, they really have provided a, a bright spot in some challenging days and long days for our staff. So we are just so appreciative of, of all the kindness and generosity and just want to, um, again, say thank you. Thank you very much, Dawn, and thank you, Anthony, both uh, for the work that you're doing in your respective uh, healthcare institutions. And again, I want to thank ACUC and all the member organizations that are here, the individuals that represent those organizations. We owe you a deep debt of gratitude, and we thank you. All of us in this county thank you, because the material that you give will help medical professionals help save lives. And that's very important to us, and we're very appreciative. Uh, while we're here with our friends from Westchester Medical Center, we do want to highlight, Anthony alluded to it, but uh, WMC Health is beginning antibody testing for COVID-19. The workforce of 12,500 will begin voluntary testing, followed by community access. Now, this antibody test does not take the place of testing for active infection that's currently being done in other test sites across the network uh, of, of the institution, as well as across the uh, county at, at large. Uh, and there are ways to access that type of testing. But for information about antibody testing, there are some websites that you can follow up with. Uh, we'll be happy to be helpful. Anybody from the press that uh, wants to talk on this topic, I would encourage them to contact Andy LaGuardia from uh, WMC Health, and he's available. Catherine can get you his information. So since this does uh, represent a press conference for members of the press who are watching this uh, uh, electronically, uh, you can follow up and we'll make sure they connect to Andy and, and a further conversation about the antibody testing, which is another example of how much uh, happens in Westchester County. may not have anything to do with the government, but it certainly shows the dynamism of the county at large in the private sector as well as in the public sector. There are a few other issues I just want to touch upon for the two o'clock briefing, and then we'll uh, answer any questions that may be coming in through the press uh, that comes through Catherine Chaffee. <clears throat> we want to mention that the Child Care Council of Westchester recently received a grant from the Westchester Community Foundation of $200,000 for child care scholarships for first responders and essential workers. 50,000 of that 200,000 was a contribution from RXR of New Rochelle regarding income eligible families. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the child care effort, uh, particularly for those first responders, essential workers has been a very important situation. The public schools, K to 12 education and private schools were closed down uh, somewhere longer than a month ago. And when that happens, children then have to stay home. And it could be one or, or both parents are in a position where they have to provide child care if they have no one in the family or other source of child care. And we've had to uh, work with the local school districts, <clears throat> excuse me, to work through some of the child care providers that exist. And then of course, uh, create some settings for child care that did not exist before as an essential way to allow those workers to work. Healthcare workers, EMS personnel, police, fire, people who need to be out of the firing lines uh, during the middle of this uh, COVID situation. So the generosity of the Westchester Community Foundation, RxR specifically, is appreciated. And that is one other example, as we had here today with ACUC, of uh, the private sector <clears throat> stepping forward to be helpful in this overall issue. I wanted to highlight as well this weekend, we are opening two of our six public golf courses. Uh, we have them. We had them closed for the last two weeks after having them open for a number of weeks. The two that were opening, Mohansic uh, Golf Course in Yorktown and Hudson Hills in Ossining, are both environments that lend themselves to uh, uh, a better control management of the flow of individuals. Uh, we reopen them uh, Saturday. We understand the weather may not be so great on Sunday, although you can never tell when a golfer is going to go out, no matter what the weather conditions are. But the bottom line is that golf can be a socially distanced recreation if properly conducted. And we're gonna to look to make sure that the right protocols are in place at both of these two golf courses, see how it works out this weekend, uh, how we handle the demand that exists with the weather's getting warmer and uh, there's gonna be more of a demand for people to wanna to be outside. We have identified that our hiking trails, our bicycling trails, uh, and, and in our case, some now, not all of our golf courses will be open for that proper recreation. We have made uh, no decision yet and are less likely rather than more likely to open up those uh, recreational facilities for which social distancing is near impossible. The ethnic festivals at the Kensico Dam, which we enjoy, 
uh, Playland Amusement Park, the beaches of Westchester County, the swimming pools of Westchester County run by the government. All of these are much more problematic. And so we're trying to pick and choose what we think can work and what may not work. Uh, and again, we reserve the right to close any item or any park or any facility if we think we can't maintain social distancing, which we're going to try to do cooperatively. We're going to try to speak to the common sense of people. They understand we're in the middle of a pandemic. They understand that we've lost almost 900 Westchester residents. <clears throat> we can't afford to uh, spread the virus further. But under the right set of controls, these functions can occur. The same in addition to the two golf courses we're opening. We have plans next week to begin our uh, regular Sunday, bicycle Sundays, on the Bronx River Parkway uh, from White Plains to Bronxville. The, uh, the terminus point has normally been the county center because the county center is outfitted for healthcare facilities. Uh, the terminus point will now be the exit of, before that on Main Street in White Plains. It's open for part of the day on Sunday. It's a good family recreation. We believe bicycling can also be socially distanced if people use common sense. We expect everybody to wear a mask and we expect everybody to uh, you know, show proper uh, behavior while they're there. We expect people are going to be smart enough to bring some hand sanitizer with them and make sure if they touch any surfaces that they're able to uh, sanitize their hands as part of their time out. But they can enjoy uh, an important recreation, a way to get out of the house and, and have appropriate recreation with the family. Many times it's family groups that go there. However, we will have parks department personnel and police personnel available there to try to make sure that crowds don't form. And uh, if over time they do, and we're unable to properly social distance, then we will uh, shut down the function, which is not what I want to do. I want us to have some appropriate recreation uh, and do that in a way that uh, is responsible. And, and I appeal to the people who will go out there in Westchester County, please use your best judgment. Let's, let, let's try not to maintain having some things in the society. And, and at some point in time when the science and the medical professionals indicate that we can open up more of our society that's very important to me. I tend to be at Peter's Restaurant or Mandarin the minute they tell me I can. And uh, that's probably not the only restaurant I'm going to go to if you look at my waistline. But, uh, but the bottom line is we only want to do it when it's safe to do it. And we have to turn to Dr. Amlin and other professionals to give us the advice and we have to listen to it, which doesn't always happen. But uh, we'll certainly try to be as practical as possible. Uh, one more um, uh, non-COVID point that I want to mention is that the Westchester County Airport will begin runway repaving repairs uh, starting on Monday. And so the airport will functionally be closed for a period of time, almost a month in length, in order for those repairs to be done. Air traffic has dwindled to very little traffic. Uh, and so we're gonna take advantage of the moment to try to complete the project a lot sooner than we would have done otherwise. Uh, we are doing this not to expand the airport. This is not a lengthening of the runway. This is not a strengthening of the runway. There's no uh, uh, type of um, uh, vehicle that can land on that runway tomorrow that couldn't already land on it today. Uh, but the repaving is a necessary process every 20 years. We've reached that point and we have to ensure security. If any airplane would land on the runway and have some problems in the landing, causing an accident, then uh, we would have uh, another horror on our hands. We don't need more than one thing like that at a time. Um, it probably will not be inconvenient for most people since most commercial flights have dwindled to a, a trickle or a few. We obviously have other airports in the metropolitan area that can be used. Their air traffic is down. Driving to LaGuardia today is not what it was under normal circumstances. But the Westchester County Airport will undergo those runway repairs, and we want to highlight that for you. Uh, I'm going to close my... Do we have any questions, Catherine? We're, we're okay. There are no press comp, uh, questions. If anyone from the press does have questions, they can certainly uh, direct it to us. We have instituted a two-tier uh, property tax relief plan that we will announce on Monday fully. We've talked about it here in this format already. It will involve the ability for people who can claim economic hardship to have their April 30th deadline date delayed until July 15th. And for those who may not have economic hardship specifically, uh, they will have a lower uh, late fee rate if they can't pay by April 30th, a dramatically lowered rate for the month of May and June, uh, which will uh, reduce the amount of money they would have been obligated to play. Otherwise, we'll talk about that in greater detail on Monday in final form. For that, we thank Governor Andrew Cuomo, who made it possible through the special executive order. Let me just close uh, with just one very brief thought, if I can. We're in a position of time that's unusual for all of us, as I said at the outset. We all know this. My saying it doesn't uh, add any particular wisdom to what we already understand. We are going through a period of time 
that will require us, as I've said many times before, to show discipline and stamina. This will not be over in a day or a week. And I think, frankly, we as Americans are accustomed to quick answers. We like to see, see things happen fast. And this is one of those, th those things that is not fast. It's slow. and We have to wait for science. There are parts of this country where different decisions are being made in different states. I think we're on the right path in the New York metropolitan area. The three governors of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut are showing a measured response. But we are in the process of discussing now what we can reopen and when we can do it on the basis of uh, intelligent and proper information. What I really wanna talk about is the desire that we all have to find a cure to this disease. We all want to know tomorrow, the day after tomorrow at the absolute latest, that there is a vaccine to treat this disease or that there's an antiviral drug that we can take it when we are positive and it can mitigate the impacts of the disease, save our lives. Science doesn't work the way a one hour television show does where the criminal is identified and brought to justice at the end of an hour. We need to resist the rhetoric that's out there that promise us a quick fix. That's no different than uh, the carnival barkers that will tell you uh, that if you take uh, you know, some sort of uh, a bottle of uh, some elixir that will solve all your problems. In theory, our society has advanced from the day where a traveling roadshow could come into town, sell you a bottle of elixir that really didn't do anything, and you bought it believing it could be fixed. And the desire to want the immediate fix is so great that we may follow errant phrases that are said or purposeful misdirection, whatever that may be. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how it's presented to you. I encourage you. Use science as your guide. I am not a man of science. I'm not a man of medicine. But when I hear somebody say there's a way to get rich quick, when I go into my Facebook or my uh, email account and some prince from a foreign country offers me millions of dollars, if I just send him my social security number, I tend to think it's a scam. And I tend to think that it's wishful thinking at best, if not a, a less benign motive. When people give you the impression that this is gonna be solved tomorrow. There's gonna be something that solves this tomorrow. Take this one thing, inject yourself with this or, or open up this particular strategy and everything will be fine. If that does come to pass, it'll be breaking news in the middle of the night. We'll all wake up and watch our TVs until the morning because the cure has been found and it will have some uh, broad base of scientific support behind it. That's something that I might say in a press conference to try to impress you but I have some knowledge, which I clearly do not. I encourage you, you're in for the long haul. Steal yourself to the sacrifice that we have to make. This is what our parents did during the depression and the war. This is what our grandparents have done. This is what people all across the world have done in periods of time where there have been other epidemics and pandemics. And it's out of that type of discipline and, and persistence and stamina that will get us through this. We will come through this but we will not come through this with a get rich quick scheme or solve the problem fast. And I think we know that. It's what we wanna believe as opposed to what as mature adults we know we have to believe, which is science and technology and, and people of goodwill and reasonability that will help get us through this. I'm George Latimer, thank you for watching. Uh, we will have our next update on Monday at two o'clock. We'll have a Facebook Live at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, stay safe over the weekend. We look forward to seeing you on Monday. Have a